aseptic technique requires the use of a Bunsen burner. In order to start, attach your Bunsen burner to the blue valve that says gas. Make sure it's not attached to the orange one that says air. Rotating the nozzle parallel to the hose turns the gas on. Making sure it's perpendicular, the gas is off. At the base of your Bunsen burner, you can see these windows. Closing them ensures that less air is forced through and allows you to more easily ignite your Bunsen burner. Locate the striker. Make sure that the flint is still intact and you see sparks when you draw across. If you do not see this little piece of black metal, known as flint, ask your TAs for a replacement. Holding the striker in an upside down way so it looks like a hat, you're going to ignite your Bunsen burner. Turn on the gas and simply strike it and it will ignite your Bunsen burner. Adjust the windows again so that your flame is only blue and not orange. You should be able to visualize two different cones, an inner cone and an outer cone when you have properly set your Bunsen burner. So if you see here, the inner cone is the hottest part of the flame, the outer cone is not as hot for sterilization. Working near the flame is key to having aseptic technique. The zone of sterility created by the Bunsen burner flame is not a very large area and is only maintained by having this steady flame. Work slowly and meticulously and only open sterile items within this zone for a limited amount of time and only when they are immediately needed. Sterilization of your inoculation tools is required before and after each use. We use both an inoculation loop, seen here, and an inoculation needle, seen here. Begin by holding your loop at a downward angle and placing it at the tip of the inner blue cone. Work your way backwards from the handle all the way up to the tip, allowing the wire to get red hot. Notice if we go lower, the wire does not get hot nearly as quickly because its area is not nearly as hot as the inner cone tip. Working your way backwards from the handle all the way up to the tip of the loop prevents aerosolized forms of contaminants that may land on yourself, others, the environment, or contaminate your work. Plates of broth culture, we're starting with a culture plate and we're going to be using our inoculation loop. We are going to transfer our new culture into a TSB broth, properly labeling first on the culture tube. We're going to take our inoculation loop, sterilizing in the inner cone of that Bunsen burner flame where it's hottest, going from base to tip. Maintaining that loop within the sterile zone as it's cooling, we're going to open our agar plate and lightly touch it to the culture to collect some. Simply flame the mouth of the test tube first and dip in your inoculation, mixing slightly into the broth culture. As we've now gone from broth culture, be sure to take care in going from base to tip to sterilize your loop again to prevent splatters. When collecting your inoculum from an agar plate, your inoculation loop should just touch the surface of the colony several times and that is sufficient. If you're scraping it up so that you can actually see the inoculum on your loop, that's too much. Once you have your inoculum, simply dip your inoculation loop aseptically into the new broth culture and slightly mix. Once completed, do a final sterilization of your loop.